said this morning, I, well, I'll start. Every Easter and Christmas time, I try to start my message at creation. And the reason for that is, is I want everyone to know that Jesus was there at creation. But yet, Jesus came later and was born of a virgin. And as after He was born of a virgin, He grew up as a young man, and He went to His Father's house at 12 years old and started teaching the scribes. Now, i got a lot of met notes written, but I don't have time for them. But He taught the scribes. He taught the preachers of the day. Taught them what the Word of God said. And then, as He grew up, He started His ministry with the disciples. And He started His ministry with all the people of the world of that day. And the Bible says that He came to the Jews and they didn't receive Him. So He went to the Gentiles. And it says, as many received Him, to him, them He gave the right to become the sons of God. And that's the lesson that Jesus tried to teach the whole time He was here. And the whole time He was here, He also went into what was going to happen. And what happened was, as <clears throat> life went on, one day, they decided to kill Him. And who decided to kill Him was, was the religious leaders, the church people, the people that were supposed to be there to present who He was. Just like today, we have a lot of people that go against God's Word. We have a lot of people that are trying to tear down the church. We have mayors of other countries, other cities, that have said, you will not have church today. I will arrest you. They're even stopping churches from having parking lot services. Thank you all for coming. But as Jesus kept preaching, as Jesus kept sharing the Word, made a man. He would heal people. He would make a man. Everything he did, he was questioned. But he had disciples. Don't bump your head at okay. He had his disciples that stood behind him. A couple of weeks ago, or last week, I talked about faith. About how we don't have faith today. How we let the world dictate our faith. We let the world dictate. Not here, thank goodness. Our church has been faithful through this whole thing. But the world is trying to dictate our faith. As Jesus grew up and went to the cross, before He went to the cross, the Bible says that He was beaten to a place that was unrecognizable. They took a crown of thorns and put it on His head and started blood bleeding out of His head profusely. They took a cat of nine tails and they beat him across the back. Now if you don't know what a cat of nine tails is, it's a whip with nine straps on the end of it. And it has glass and metal and rock sewn into it. And these guys that were doing that were professionals. They knew how to hit that whip on your back and pop it just at the right time to rip your skin. And Jesus was ripped for me and for you. As He was being beaten over and over and over, then they decided to spit in His face and slap Him, pull His beard out. All the things that we know is hurtful. We know that is brutal. And then... They nailed him on the cross. Deb. On the right cross. Oh. 
is is you you're on the cross and because you're hanging and you're up like this stretched out <clears throat> you can't breathe you start suffocating so what you do is you stand up on your feet and push yourself up so you can breathe and then you get tired and you flop down and the skin tears in your arms again in your hands and you get to where you can't stand anymore you stand up over up and down, up and down. And it rips your skin, it rips your feet. And you remember that Jesus had already been beaten. And His back had holes in it. His skin had great big rips. Blood just torn out. He was already weak. But He did it for you. And as He was hanging on the cross, He spoke to His mother. He said, I love you. And hanging on the cross, he was saying, I love you. He could have called off, he could have called the angels. He could have said, I'm tired of this. I don't want to do this. But because he loved us, he chose not to. <clears throat> As Jesus hung there at the, toward the end. They took a spear and jammed it in his side. That was to show he was dead. But just before he died, he said, Tetta Telesta, which means it's finished. Which means that life is over. But it wasn't. It was just the beginning. After Jesus died, <clears throat> he was put in a borrowed tomb of Joseph Arimathea. The interesting thing about that is, all through the Bible, it tells us about Jesus coming. <clears throat> 
It tells us about how he would die. It tells us, even in Isaiah, that he would be buried in a borrowed tomb. It says his grave was assigned to the wicked men. Because he was a criminal in Jewish eyes, he would have been buried with the criminals. So he already had a grave assigned. Actually, what the grave was was a hole that they pushed people in and covered them up. That's where he would have been buried. Yet he was with the rich man in his death. Because he had done no violence, nor was there any deceit in his mouth, but the Lord was pleased to crush him to grief. He would render himself as a guilt offering. See? And Isaiah says that Jesus died for us. He died for me and you. I wasn't even here yet. But he knew me. He knew me because he loved me. He loved me. In the New Testament, just to back that up, it says, Rich man came to Joseph of Arimathea, laid him in his new tomb. That's in Matthew. <clears throat> then came the morning. They all walked away. Nothing to say. They just lost their dearest friend. All that he said. This is the way it would end. The dreams they had dreamed, not as they seem. Now the man is dead and gone. The guard in the jail, hammer and nail. How would I not be so long?
debated. I'm going to read the words. This was written somewhere in the 60s. Many of you won't even know it. Just suppose God searched through heaven and couldn't find one willing to be. The supreme sacrifice that was needed that would buy eternal life for you and me. Had it not been for a place called Mount Calvary, had it not been for the old rugged cross, had it not been for a man called Jesus, then forever my soul would be lost. I'm so glad he was willing to drink that bitter cup. Although he prayed, Father, let it pass from me. I'm so glad he never called heaven's angels. Thank you, God. From these hands, pull the nails that torment me. And then it finishes with the chorus. And it says, Then forever my soul would be lost. See, he didn't have to die on that cross. The Bible says he could have called 10,000 angels. But he chose to die alone for you and me. The empty tomb. As Mary went to the empty tomb, she got there and she saw that the door was open. Or the rock had been moved away. And she panicked. Even though that Jesus had told her that in three days I'll rise again. She panicked. And the angel that was there said to her, Do not be afraid. For I know who you're looking for. Jesus, who has been crucified. He is not here. He has risen. As he said he would. Come and see the place where they laid him. That was the first evidence. Can you imagine walking up to a grave and him not being there? Jesus, as he left, as he came out of the tomb, the Bible says that he appeared to Mary. He appeared to two walking by the side, by, by the way. He appeared to the disciples and then Thomas, doubting Thomas. And the Bible says that he saw 500 people at one time. 500. You can't not believe that. See, when I, on the way to church this morning, I was listening to something about Hitler. And many people said that Hitler didn't die. But nobody could ever verify anything. They just speculated. I can remember that they used to say Elvis wasn't dead. I can remember Kennedy wasn't dead. I can remember all that. They came back to life. Jesus is the only one that came back to life. He lives in my heart today. I hope he lives in yours. Amen. Well, he lives.
And Luke, it tells us, thus it is written, that Christ would suffer and rise again from the dead on the third day. You are my witnesses of these things. And behold, I'm sending you forth, you forth, the promise of the Father upon you. That's Luke 24, 50. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be my witnesses, both in Jerusalem and all of Judea and Samaria and to the remotest parts of the earth. After he said these things, he was lifted up as they were looking. And a cloud received him out of his sight, out of their sight. And as they were gazing intently into the sky, while he was going, while he was going up, two men in white clothing stood beside him and said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into the sky? This same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come again in white manner as you've watched him go into heaven. Last song. <laughs> There's a love that's been born through the ages. On that line stands an old road. On that cross, the battle is raging for the gain of man's soul or his lost. On the sky, march the forces of evil.
Christians will meet him in the sky. 